Hi guys, it's Lara. Thank you so much for watching and welcome back to my channel. So today I will show you how I made my new fluffy cardigan. I made this cute cardigan of two simple blankets and I paid for each blanket something around 1 euro 90 or something like that. It wasn't even 2 euros. So this is definitely a great Christmas present idea for anyone who is on a budget or simply for anyone who just like me is basically obsessed with blankets and if they could they would run around the whole winter wrapped in blankets but people would think they're weird so that's why we're gonna make a cardigan of the blankets. So I used a button-down shirt pattern that's fitted and I made a few adjustments which I will of course show you first in today's video and then I will show you how I made the cardigan. So if you want to know more about that, if that's something you're interested in, then please keep watching. As usual, let's have a look at the sketch of my cardigan first and at the pattern and how I created the pattern. So here we have the cardigan. You can see it has a long ruffled collar. It has pockets on the side parts on the front and it has these long cuffs. So I used a pattern for a button down shirt that I adjusted. So I had a pattern that was fitted. I find it very pretty. It has a button placket and collar originally, and it had three quarter sleeves. So you can see there are like two front parts on each side, one top back part, two side parts for the back, one middle back part, and then obviously the collars, uh, the collars, sorry, the sleeves. Now, since these were three quarter sleeves, I had to make them just a little bit longer so that they would come a little bit above my angle. So I added some extra here and then I made a shape for the cuff so you can clearly see what shape it is. And since I knew I'm going to use a border for the edging, I did not need to add on these sides any seam allowance. However, I added seam allowance here on the top. So this would be the sleeves. And then I took the middle front part and the pattern for the button placket. Now the measurement C represents this curve plus the part of the button placket that comes towards the middle. So I made here kind of this same mark for my pattern for the cardigan and then I had a line how far I wanted to come to the middle because that would have been the original pattern and as you can see I kind of went a little bit straight downwards and then I made it wider by this amount, you know, so that it would meet in the middle. And yeah, I went like then downwards and added this little piece here because I'm just going to make it checked. So that would be the original pattern. And let me grab another color. And that's basically kind of the part for the button placket that comes to the middle that I added here, but I changed the shape. So it's kind of a V shape instead of the typical collar shape. And then I took the pattern for the side, for the front part, and I sketched this shape for my pockets. Now on the top and on the bottom, I didn't need any seam allowance because again, I was using a border. And I should also mention the shirt wasn't as long as the cardigan. I decided to add 14 inches everywhere. And because I liked the shape of the shirt already, because it was a little bit longer in the front, I didn't need to change anything. So I basically measured everywhere 14 inches on several places and made the pattern a little bit longer. I did the same for the back and that way my cardigan ended being longer than the original pattern for the shirt. And this would be the color. Now the yellow part is basically this length. Now let me grab another color. Let's make it blue. So when I measured this curve on the front part that's what gave me the measurement for this. And then I needed something that goes, you know, around around my neck, like the collar part. Now the original collar would be this curve that would be measurement B. And I wanted this part to be ruffled. So this is just a half of the collar. I made this twice as wide as the original curve. And yeah. I made two of these pieces. I have sewn them in the middle together and then I ruffled this part. And that's what made the color so special. Here we have the main parts for my cardigan. Let's start on the left side. So here we have the sleeve and the cuff for the sleeve. 
These two parts are for the front. Now this is the middle part and this is obviously the part for the side. And there are also two pieces that are going to be pockets. Over here, folded in the middle, we have the top back part. This is also folded in the, in the middle. This is the middle back part. And here we have the side parts for the back. And this very long strip, this is two layers placed on each other. This is going to be the kind of a scarf color or what would you call it? Like the thing that goes around the edge of the front and the neckline. As a first step, I pinned a border around the edges of the cuffs. I left out the edge that I was about to sew on the sleeves later. Hey. Here is what it looked like once the border has been pinned in place. I pinned the border also to the tops and to the bottoms of the pockets. Then it looked like this. I have sewn the border on with stretchy zigzag and here is what it looked like. Next I pinned the pockets to the side front part. This is what it looked like. And then I pinned the front middle parts to the front side parts. Hey. Hey. I've sewn the pieces together with regular straight stitch. Once the pieces were sewn together, I folded the seam to one side and I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag and here's what it looked like. And then I pinned the back pieces together. I have sewn them also through with regular straight stitch and once that was done, I also folded the seam to one side and I have sewn it through with stretchy zigzag, just like I have done with the front pieces. And here we have the top back part. I have sewn it on the same way. Next, I pinned the sleeves together. I have sewn them through with straight stitch and I cut back any excess fabric. And then I pinned the cuffs to the sleeves. Right sides were facing each other. The wrong side of the cuffs was up. I have sewn the cuffs on with regular straight stitch and then I folded the seam upwards, meaning inside of the sleeves and I have sewn through again with straight stitch and here's what it looked like. As a next step, I pinned the shoulders and the sides of the cardigan together. I have sewn through again with straight stitch and folded the seam to one side. And surprise, surprise, I have sewn the seams through with stretchy zigzag. And then I put the color pieces together and I have sewn the middle together. Then I folded the seam to sides and I've sewn through both sides with stretchy zigzag. And as you can see, I've also sewn the border on with stretchy zigzag and I ruffled the inside edge of the collar. If you want to know how to ruffle with a straight stitch, I will link a video down below where I explained it. Next, I pinned the collar to the neckline and to the front parts. I personally decided to pin the collar so that the right side of the collar was facing the wrong side of the cardigan so that when I would fold it upwards I would see the nice side and from the inside I wouldn't see the seam but obviously you can do it the other way you can pin right sides to each other. Thank you. 
Once I was done with the pinning, I have sewn the collar on with straight stitch. And then I cut back the excess fabric to make the seam as small as possible. I used zigzag scissors for that because I find it pretty. And once I was done with that, I started pinning the seam to one side, just like I have done with pretty much any seam in this project. And again, I have sewn it through with stretchy zigzag so that it would match the entire optic of the cardigan. Here is what it looked like once the collar has been sewn in place. And then I have pinned the sleeves in and I have sewn them on with straight stitch. Once that was done, again I cut back the excess fabric just a little bit. I hemmed the bottom edge of the cardigan with the same border I've used for all other edges. And then my cozy, warm, blankety blanket cardigan was finished and now let's have a look at some details. Now, I can already tell that I will be wearing this cardigan almost every day in winter. First of all, black is a great color because that goes pretty much with everything. And I love this feminine style. And honestly, it is so cozy and it ma makes me feel like I'm wrapped in a blanket. Oh, wait, I am. Oh, well, that's the idea, right? All right, so this is how I made my new cardigan. One thing I absolutely love about this cardigan is the type of warmth that it gives me. Because it's a blanket, so obviously the warmth is a little bit different than you would get from a sweater and I enjoy it so much. And then what I like so much about this cardigan is that it dries so fast. So whenever I wash it, I just need to put it on a coat hanger and hang it somewhere, you know, in a like on a door frame and it's going to dry within an hour. And that would make it a great piece if you need to travel over winter somewhere and you need to travel light because then you can simply hand wash the cardigan, squeeze it out nicely, put it on a coat hanger and that's it. If you would do it before you go to sleep, you're going to have for sure fresh cardigan in the morning. You don't need to iron it because it dries nicely. It's just, it's just a great material. That's why I love blanket so much. And for me, it's definitely going to be my favorite piece this winter because, especially because it's black, it's very easy to combine with anything I have. And I just like the style. This is something I enjoy a lot. Oh, and another thing, if you have a pet, you're going to see pet hair on it very nicely. I have a white dog, so perfect because, you know, black is so last season. Black with dog hair is totally in. Anyway, so I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give the video a thumb up because it really helps my channel. You can also subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet. And I will list down below also all of my Instagram accounts and a link to my vlogging channel and some other stuff that I think might be useful or interesting for you. So thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and see you soon with my next project. Bye.